The Blackburn Buccaneer aircraft stems from a design in the 1950s uh, and a concept for the Royal Navy to create a low-level strike aircraft capable of flying below radar in that critical undetectable band below radar but also flying at and about the speed of sound and capable of delivering conventional as well as nuclear weapons. The prototype of the aircraft, the Blackburn NA-39, of which the Fleet Air Arm Museum has the last remaining example, uh, used a brand new fuselage design and technology. This super sleek design was brand new in the 1950s and used a number of innovations, including boundary layer control, which forced air, high pressure air from the engines over some of the control surfaces and wing areas to enable better control at low speeds, at takeoff, at landing, and also during that period of operating at high speed at low level. The sleek new fuselage design was designed to be kept as tight and as small as possible and the frontal area as, as narrow as possible, A, to avoid radar detection and B, to enable the aircraft to travel at these very high speeds. Much of the fuselage was also machined out of solid material as, as well as using conventional riveted sheets. As a Cold War designed aircraft, one of the threats of course was, was nuclear attack and the S Mark I that we have in the collection actually still has its white anti-flash nuclear paint scheme still intact, very rare paint scheme to still have on our aircraft. This special white paint was designed to give some level of protection to the crew and the aircraft from nuclear thermal exposure. As well as the innovative boundary layer system employed on the aircraft, it also used a, an innovative new split tail cone dive brake. This could be opened up and used to steady the aircraft in a dive ahead of launching weaponry and also used to slow the aircraft down on landing. The Buccaneer landing speed was higher than many of the aircraft previously designed and used in the Navy. The Buccaneer design was largely successful from the outset, although the de Havilland Gyron Juniors were an area which was showing that it was lacking in power. With the update to the Buccaneer S Mark II. They incorporated the Rolls-Royce Spey engine, which would give the Buccaneer all of the extra power it needed and turn the aircraft into a world-beating design. Buccaneer aircraft were in service with the Royal Navy from the early 1960s right the way through to 1978. As a second lease of life, many of those existing airframes were transferred from the Navy to the RAF and continued a very, very successful operational career with the RAF, even taking part in the first Gulf War in the early 1990s. Most of the aircraft finally came out of service in 1994, and that's when the Fleet Air Arm Museum received XV333 on a single flight, one final flight from Lossiemouth back down to Yeovilton where she was repainted in 801 Naval Air Squadron colours and joined our collection of aircraft on the Fleet Air Arm Aircraft Carrier Flight Deck Exhibition. The sleek fuselage design and the very small frontal area on the Buccaneer aircraft means that the cockpit is incredibly small, a very tight working space for the pilot and an even greater challenge for the design engineers at Blackburns and Hawker Siddeley's to cram in all of the modern instrumentation switches, dials, buttons, and everything which was needed to furnish the inside of this brand new strike fighter aircraft. 